GL300S is finally making its UK debut here at Romy UK. And we've got our very own Paul Jones to review the machine. So Paul, what do you think of this new machine? I, I did see it at Emo the first time, but this is, the, like you say, it's the GL300. It does look a, a, a big machine, and it is a big machine. It's a heavy machine. It's over five tonnes in weight. Uh, the, the sort of the predecessor to this, or the uh, the previous lathe, was the GL280, but that was a much smaller machine. In fact, this is almost like double in size. However, the capacity is only a little bit more, which means they put a real focus on the weight of the machine to make it bigger, heavier. A, a, a lot of mach machine tool manufacturers are going down this path to try and accommodate you know, very, very difficult machining operations. And this, this particular model, if we move and, and the camera can go in, is, is, is uh, equipped here with a subspindle. Now, this is the first time Romy have, have had a turning center with a subspindle. First time Romy have had a turning center with a Y-axis. So this is new to them, this is new ground. But the interesting point here is that this machine was actually running, or this model was running in their factory in, in Brazil for two years before they actually launched it in the market alongside their GL280, so it's proven and it's tested. Uh, it is a fantastic machine. It is available uh, here to see at Romy, not just today, but any day that you want to uh, come along. I like also the turret on this machine. It's a large turret. Uh, the, the driven tools on here, it's got around about seven kilowatts of power. I think the, the, the weight, five tons, is a, is a big aspect. The Y-axis is plus or minus 50 mil on here. But what is also interesting, and we're going to see it running in a minute, we're going to press the cycle start button, so you are going to see this demo in action. Uh, what is interesting is if you go up to the GL350, the next machine up, you get a 75 mil plus or minus Y axis, so even more, um, even more capacity for your sort of off-centre work. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. I think something to state as well, Paul, the range um, is it, of, of these GLs, from the 350 to the 300, they're all from the same casting that are manufactured in Brazil and they've really kind of mastered this modular aspect of the machine tool and as well the new software, the new programming system here, touchscreen, looks really fancy. The, the, the 32i, they were one of the first to have the, this, this particular control on here and we had a bit of a play with it earlier and uh, touched a few of the uh, a, a few of the soft keys and the, and the screen, but we don't want to have any accidents when we're doing the demo, so I think we'll leave, leave that well alone. Um, back inside the machine here, if you look at the slant bed, the way the swarf falls down, um, the slant here and the swarf conveyor at the bottom of the machine, another area to the back of the machine here is the swarf conveyor that comes with it, which actually, even though the machine's quite big, the actual depth of the swarf or the width of the swarf conveyor is quite slim because the angle gradient is quite high as well for the evacuation. And what we're gonna cut on here now is a piece of EN24T. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut the door. Uh, nice auto door, I love the auto door. It doesn't, means you don't get to build your muscles up as much though. And then I'm gonna press cycle start and we're gonna see the machine now in action. I think also with the auto door, Paul, it's great for when you're looking to automate the machine. I think that they've done a fantastic job considering this is their first twin spindle, uh, Y-axis, milling functionality, CNC lay. But it's a market they needed to get into. I mean, you, you just have to be in this. As a, as a machine tool manufacturer, Romy, uh, all their machines are built in Brazil. They have their own foundry. 60% uh, of the output of the company is what we're seeing here is machine tools. The other 40% is made up of, of, of manufacturing or producing castings for industry and injection molding machines. But not having a machine that has the uh, capabilities of the, you know, or, or multi-axis capability does put you at a disadvantage when engineers are looking more automated one-hit style machining. And it's great to see this cut and dry as well. With your experience in machine tools, Paul, do you believe that this will be a real success in the UK market? I think, I think the, the, there's a lot of competition. I mean, you know, that's one thing to say to start with. They're going into a marketplace here where they're going to be faced with, you know, a dozen other competitors when they're looking to pitch for, pitch for the order. Um, you know, where's it going to succeed? I think it will be popular amongst companies that are really unsure of, of, of how, um, you know, how heavy they want a machine, what work they're going to be doing week in, week out. You know, if, if they're just cutting small parts of aluminium, then they might look at the weight of this and think it could be an overkill, uh, or the power of this, it could be an overkill. But how often is it nowadays in, in an engineering market where parts change? 
uh, you know, reliance on your, on your customer from day to day changes, you know, you get demands for different types of work, then you need a machine that's got maybe uh, as much power as you can have, as much capacity as you can have, and the reliability to, uh, to stand the test of time. I mean, you certainly get bang for buck in regards to price. You need to contact Roman Machine Tools UK for a price on this machine, and we would strongly recommend you do that once you've watched this video. If you're in the market for a CNC lathe, twin spindle, big turret with milling and, functionality. And I think in a minute we're gonna see once this demonstration uh, is finished, we're going to actually see the subspindle come into play. Now, the subspindle on this machine is a subspindle. It looks like it's a smaller, uh, it's a smaller spindle, so it's, it's potentially not as capable as as the main spindle. Here we go. Uh, you know, we've got some of the uh, the uh, driven tools in action now. Um, I think with the seven kilowatts of power on this, again, as you see it cut. I know the cut's not massive, but it is cutting dry. And EN 2040, it's not a soft material. It's not a soft material. It is a big turret as well though, isn't it? It's a chunky old turret. It is indeed. I think that the build of the machine really impresses me. And, it, and, and we can't forget but to mention, it's a very good looking machine, Mr. Jones. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> well, you had to pick that one out, yeah. No, it, it is a good looking machine. I'm not sure that's gonna be at the top of everyone's priority. They're probably gonna be more interested in the practicality of it, the, the ergonomics of it. Uh, and you know everything that we see here is cut in dynamics, but it, it, it's not a disadvantage, is it? You know, it's a it's a pretty uh, pretty tasty looking machine. Tool setting arm in here, plenty of light. What I, what I think you'll notice as well from the camera action here, or from where the camera is here, the actual um, centre point of the the turned part is very close to the door. Now some might think that that might restrict the swing of the machine, but others might think it it's easier to load, it's easier to get in and take the parts out which of course, um, you know, is more practical. Nice you drilling operation happening here now too. No, I think you're absolutely spot on there. I think you've got a 10 inch chuck. You're probably looking to load billets of that nature inside the machine and also for bro robot loading as well. The accessibility to the main and second spindle is a lot more accessible. We've got a 4,000 RPM spindle actually. This is just looking at the detail on here. It's a 4,000 RPM spindle. I, th I believe that's on the main. Uh, you've got a 12 station turret on here, uh, the, uh, the turret is a BMT, the Y axis on here is plus or minus 50 mil uh, and as I stressed earlier if you go for the next model up you start to get Y axis of, uh, is y -axis of up to 75 millimetres. I mentioned that swing there G, I'm just looking on the, uh, the spec sheet here, the swing is actually 530 mil so it's not um, it's not bad, is it, still, when you look at how close the, the, the chuck is to the, to the window? You've still got a lot of, of capacity in there. And also, i uh, like to mention, you can also see the end mill that will be servicing the second spindle. So mun function, milling functionality uh, for both spindles. We mentioned that the castings are manufactured at Romy in Brazil, but pretty much nearly every single component that you can see there is manufactured by Romy bar the turret and the trucks. And it is a popular machine in the UK. I think over the last five years we've seen a lot of these machines going out into the UK market. Here in comes the subspindle. You see the subspindle picking up the part there. You know, if you went back 25, 30 years, longer than that, 40 years ago, when you were doing your apprenticeship, then you would have, uh, you know, ha seeing machines like this in action, you'd just think where, how things have moved on. You know, the automation element, the one-hit machining element. I could have saved so much time in, in when I was on the shop floor having machines like this. Uh, it is a, uh, a really good demonstration. So you can come here and see this machine. You can see this demo uh, and more machines here at Romy cutting hard steels dry uh, here in Rugby. We're here today at their, at their machining event, but this, this showroom's open all the time, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, all see these machines, more of them on MTD CNC.